After that, we'll go to our continue path function. And inside here, and say if the M open list is empty, then there's no reason to go through here, and so I'll just return it. Otherwise, create a, a search cell object pointer and call it current cell and set that to the equal set that to the get next cell and say if the current cell ID equals the M goal cells ID. Basically saying if the current cell already has reached the goal cell. Then we want to set the goal cell parent to equals the current cell's parent and after that create a search cell point uh, object a pointer and call it get path you make a for loop I'll explain what this is doing and say get path equals the m goal cell And if the get path does not equal no, that's all capital. So does not equal no, and say get path equals the get path parent. And we'll want to push the M goal. I mean path to go. We want to push it back and put it and whatever your better class is, then it's called new back to three. And we'll want to pass in the get path. Uh, the X coordinate. And the Y equals just set it to zero. Since we're not using Y at all, and set the and put it the Z coordinate here. And close it off. And basically, what this is doing is going through our P goal cells. We set the get path, and um, and we'll push push back the shortest path that's inside the the goal cell so this is what this uh, uh, for loop is doing is going through our cells and checking what what's the shortest path and it's pushing it to the path to goal list after that we want to set that we have found the goal already and set it to true and then just return Else, if we haven't found the goal, then we want to calculate our right side cell. We're going to go through our right side and call it path open and pass in the current cell. Uh, the x coordinate and the Z coordinate oh yeah you know what since we're getting our right side cell we set the X coordinate plus one since the current the current cell the current cell plus one 
So it takes one to the right side. And we'll set our new cost, pass in the current cell. G plus one. Each square gonna cost one. Or you could you could probably put whatever it costs. I'm not sure what's the real value would sell. Usually it's just one from from what I've heard of. And we set the parent to, to the current we set the current cell to the parent. And basically what this is what's doing. We will calculate our our left side. Or right cell, left side, or whatever. Um, let's put. It, I'm gonna put it right side. And it's basically almost gonna be the same exact thing as this. So just copy it unless you wanna write the whole thing again. And we'll just set it to minus one, which is the left side. And everything else should stay the same. And then we we'll want to calculate the up or the up cell or top cell or your, whatever you want to call it. And and that'll be plus one in the Z. And we'll want to calculate our down cell or our bottom cell. And that'll be minus Z. Right, the current cell co Z coordinate minus one. And if you are, this is optional, but it's depending on your game. And if it's calculating diagonals, then this is what you could be doing. So we can calculate our left up diagonal. And it's spell. How did I don't even know how to spell diagonal? Or right. pretty sure that's how you spell it. And and this is gonna be a little bit tiny bit different now I'll explain in a bit and since it's gonna be our left side left diagonal it's gonna be minus one there and plus one on the Z and our cost is gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna be our is be it's gonna be 1.4 1.4 and the reason being is that since each cell is gonna be costing one you're gonna be going for our diagonal we could you're gonna be going to through two different cells, our left side and plus the tops one and that will be two plus one plus one for the two cells, the two and it, you take the square root of that and that will give you the 1.414 and that's to be the cost for diagonals it's a little bit more costly but and, and, you, and if you're not going to be implementing diagonals then don't even worry about what I'm doing here, just ignore it and then after that we we'll want to calculate our right side diagonal, right up, because it's also a right down diagonal, and let's copy this. I don't wanna, and it's gonna be plus one plus one here, and everything else will stay the same, of course. And now after that we want to calculate our other diagonal, our left down. And that's gonna be minus one minus one here. And our final one, which is gonna be our right down. Diagonal, and it's going to be plus one and minus one here, and that's it for our diagonals. And then we want to want to loop through our open list. And we'll say if the current cell ID, oh, 
Remember to put the F. If the current cell ID equals the one in the open list, then we will want to erase it from the open list. And that will be all for our our continue path. It's always the bigger one than all of them. And we'll go to our last function. And that's our, my boy, the vector 3. Or whatever you name, you name your vector uh, class. And that's the next path pause. And basically this function is going to be getting our our the first um, position from the shortest path in the list so this is what's going to be getting our first pos position in the list so we want to set the in index and set it to 1 you can call it a vector object or a vector and call it an x next pause cell or next cell or next position it's called a next pause or whatever you want to call it and set the next pause dot x to equal the m and set that to the m path to go and the array of that m path to go size index and the x of that so uh, let me do the next one the next pause dot z and set that to the same thing but to the x I mean the z and this is also the same thing as doing it in an array I mean in a for loop so you could probably say for i equals Zero i is less than path core size, and you could do the same thing. It doesn't really matter, but this saves some time instead of doing it in a for loop, so I'm more efficient. And create another vector, vector three, and call it distance, and set that to the next pause minus pause. Yeah, I'll explain it a little bit after I finish this and say if the index is less than the empath to go and that size and then inside here you want to say if the distance dot length is less than the radius I'll explain that in a bit. Let me just finish this real quick. Then we want to erase it from the um from the from the list or the path go. The end. Since the end is basically the first one, the first position that we have passed, so we start from the end. And subtract it from the index. And basically, this is basically. And before that, before I say I finish, return the next cell. And next pause, I mean. I'll explain a bit. Okay, and here in the distance, 
when I say pause, I mean the AI's pause, whatever you're gonna call it. I know we don't have this position yet, but by pause, I mean the AI's or wherever you're gonna use pathfinding to, to that object. So it's gonna equal to the object's position, the current position. And we're gonna go into the array and set this if the if the AI's position or object's position has touched our our first um, position in the shortest path then we want to erase that and by radius I mean the your AI's or objects radius I know we don't have this but but when you want to implement this you will want to set it you could either set here you, you probably could change this function if, depending whatever you, class you have your position I, let's pretend it's a game object blah 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 and whatever your base class is or whatever you can uh, or whatever your enemy class or AI class whatever it's called AI underscore AI and then all you can just do you say AI dot pause and AI radius and basically once your AI has touched the first position in the shortest path you will want to erase it so that once that's deleted it's going to go to the next path and the next path and blah 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 in the next video well basically we're done already for our pathfinding and in the next video I'll show you what I did th with this um, pathfinding so I'll see you guys there and you'll see how it looks like alright see you guys